Good afternoon, guys. It's Friday now. Uh, yeah, so what are we gonna do today? Well, my plan for today is to remove the old fuel pump wiring that's in the car because I have new fuel pump wiring coming. Um, the drive shaft didn't show up, which kind of sucks. I just messaged Miguel again, uh, asking for a status update. He keeps bugging the place that said they supposedly shipped it. Um, he proved to me, he's like, look, here's all the messages. So I know it's not Miguel, it's literally the drive shaft place. They promised they shipped it on Monday. It's shipping from like Houston area, and here it is Friday, I still don't have it, so. I'm calling a little bit of bullshit, but it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, so I, what I plan on doing is removing that wiring today. Uh, I have new wiring coming or a new 12 volt switch setup coming from Kaizen Motorsports. Jose made me a custom kit. Uh, the wiring that was is on the car, not was, is on the car, is too small. It's just not gonna work for me, unfortunately. So I was gonna have fuel pressure issues and all that good stuff because I wasn't be, gonna be able to have enough voltage. Uh, the wiring that was on it was designed specifically for my stock NA fuel pump which didn't require much voltage because obviously you can only make so much power. The pump was really tiny and it didn't matter. So I'm gonna remove that here. I'm gonna show you guys how it's mounted right now. Uh, another thing I'd like to do is go ahead and remove my ECU and remount it. Uh, the way it's in there, the wiring has to run in a way that doesn't look right or flow right. And it looks like the wiring's kind of bunched in there. Uh, I'm gonna take the light here and show you guys real quick so maybe you have a better understanding. If you guys can see here, it's a little bunched up and the wiring doesn't look perfect. Um, instead of this being angled this way, I'd like to rotate this a complete, I guess it'd be a complete 180. So this plug right here is facing on this side, uh, and these plugs will be on the outer side of it. Now, another purpose of that is to get this from being kinked up like this to be one flowing motion, almost like a perfect U. Um, I can also then push this up slightly, uh, to allow room, more room for the ECU and some other things. Um, one other thing that's going to be removed after I do that is the fuel pump switches here are no longer going to be mounted underneath the, uh, well, the kick panel, they're actually gonna be in the trunk. Uh, that frees up some more room for me, which I'm going to need for this plug here to sit over there. So that'll actually work out really well. Um, if you guys aren't sure what this is, this is actually my stock ABS sensor here. Um, Jose made me this plug and play kit so I can tap right into the wheel speed sensor so I can set up rolling anti-lag, uh, traction control, etc. Uh, this just makes it a little bit easier for me. Uh, yeah, I don't even have it plugged in right now, which I just now noticed because I'm an idiot. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of all that. And this shouldn't be that hard, let's hope. So let's go ahead and remove this and remove all the wiring that needs to go with it, which is ran underneath this panel here, back up under the back seat. And let me go ahead and get the trunk pop for you guys real quick here, real quickly. Go ahead and skip that right like Sean. Sure. Go ahead and pop this up real light. Oh, oh, oh. And then yeah, if you guys can see the red wiring, it's ran underneath here and up under here. Um, I'm probably just gonna sell this kit, so if someone wants it, I'll put it up for sale, um, whatever. If someone gives me 30 bucks for the whole entire kit, it's all yours. Um, it's pretty easy to use. So I'm gonna take that out here and be done. So let me go ahead and start ripping this out. All right, so if you guys can see some of the wiring here, um, let me get in here, it might be a little dark, pick this up for you. So I went ahead and unplugged this, undid all the wiring already. Um, I am just gonna sell this because it's still perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I just need bigger wiring now. So I'll probably sell this kit to someone, 30 bucks, it's yours. I think this stuff alone was more than $30. So whoever gets it, it's whatever. I'm not gonna use it, it's just gonna sit, so why not? Um, even has, if you can see here, the entire power wire, uh, that actually goes to the battery itself is actually sleeved. The guy who made it went a little above and beyond. So you can only see maybe three into that once it's actually in the engine bay. The rest of it is unnecessary sleeved, but I guess it doesn't really matter. So whoever gets it, you'll be able to see that it's fully sleeved. Next up, what I gotta do is I'll disconnect it from over here on the battery itself. You guys can't really see the wire ran, but I need to take the wheel off, take all the plastic liner out because I ran it up and under this wheel well yet to get to the power over here. Instead of connecting it next time directly to the battery here, I'm gonna connect it to the power source inside of the fuse box. Uh, if you pull the fuse box, fuse box up, there's actually a power connector under there that I can connect directly to. Um, just kinda cut the wire, crimp it, and put a wire nut over it and it'll hold power and it's all hidden and pretty. So it's kinda neat. Awesome. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and uh, pull all the, fuck, I hate doing this. Pulling this plastic liner out and stuff, I absolutely hate doing this. I've never, ever, 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 ever enjoyed doing this. It's always a pain in the dick. To get out's easy, but putting it back in is always a nightmare. So I guess I'll do that here next, and I'll show you guys how it's ran well right now. 
All right, guys, so I went ahead and got all the plastic off over here, if you can see, which I hate doing. I absolutely hate removing that stuff. It's always a pain in the dick. Um, so what I need to do next is, here's the rest of the wiring that I need to, uh, well, yank, but I have to break off all the zip ties, if you can see that they're holding that up. Um, it's just this black little line here, which I'll pull it through real quick. It's just this, it's the power cord, which I said before, see how it's nicely sleeved? So if someone wants to buy it, it's all done. I'll be having it ripped out here within a matter of seconds. Actually, it only took me a couple minutes. Um, now that I'm under here, back, you know, seven years ago when I started doing wiring, look at this shitty tape jobs I was doing for like, just to make ghetto ass wiring looms. Oh God, I might fix all that and re-sleeve it just so it looks better. Cause that looks terrible. Actually, yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that because that looks like shit. So I'm gonna redo that while I'm under here. Um, here's another good example. You can see the rest of my brake lines under here. Uh, my stainless steel brake lines come in and that's how they bend and come down into a set of StopTech braided brake lines. And these are my Megan coilovers that I'm surprised. I mean, I've had these on the car for four or five years and there's no rust on them, which is pretty damn good. Um, Actually, that's really impressive now I'm looking at it more. Like, if you can see there, the collar has no rust on the collar at all, which is really common. Now, I don't drive this thing year-round, so that might be part of the reason why. But, yeah, it looks pretty good. So, you know how I was saying last night, guys, I was going to have to reroute the wiring? Well, after I actually moved, removed, moved, removed, yeah, the wiring for the fuel pump, all that setup, which is now getting moved to the trunk, it freed up the room I need to put the kick panel back in. What I mean by that is this. So there's an actual kick panel, let me remove these, that sits over top the ECU, so you can put your feet up there and not worry about crushing it. Um, now I had to slightly cut it up here, if you guys can see. Uh, there's actually like a middle fin that actually used to sit there stock. I cut that out so it completely opens this area up. Um, but when I had the, I guess you would call it the fuel pump, wiring and fuses, whatever, uh, I was sitting right where this piece was. Now that that's removed, I actually have the room and I can put this back on. Um, I was always having to worry about people kicking the wiring or, you know, tripping something because uh, I didn't have this panel on. So now that I can put this panel back on, I don't really have to worry about people screwing up my wiring. And it just gives me a little bit of, okay, don't worry about it. I, don't, I, I love the fact that I no longer have to tell people, hey, watch where you put your feet. It's annoying. I know it's petty, but I want the car to be a drivable as possible. I don't want to have to be like, well, we have this special thing you got to do and you can only do this with the car. Like the closer I can have it, you just get in and drive it, the better off I feel I am. Um, I also cut it here, which I'd never needed to do. I'm not sure why I did that. I think I was just getting cutting crazy one day. So I'm not sure why I cut that there, but yeah, if you guys ever do it, all you got to do is to cut out the middle fin, which looks just like the end pieces. Uh, it just happens to be in the center there where you can see I cut it. Um, not a big deal, but I'm going to be happy I can put that back in now. One thing I do have to do now is I have to depin this connector here where the blue and red wire is. Now before, back here, there's actually for the stock fuel pump, there's a fuel pump module. What you have to do is splice into this blue and red wire to give it power to send it through this unit that goes to the stock fuel pump. Well, Jose made me a kit, plug and play, for the most part. Um, just need to remove this blue wire, plug in his new, which already has a pin connector on it, pin it in there, and I'm good to go clip it back here and it runs straight off the fuel pump that's inside of here. Um, I used all the stock wiring for a certain reason. Uh, it just makes my life a little bit easier and deep pinning this shouldn't be that hard. I've done Deutsch connectors before, but I've never done or deep pinned the stock connector. So I need to kind of look inside here and see how they go about that or how it works. I've never really messed with it before. So I guess I should probably read online maybe first before I screw the connector up. That's the last thing I want to do. So I think I'm going to look that up here next and go from there. All right, so I went ahead and deep the one wire, but the next thing I'm thinking here is, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and depend the rest. I don't know if I need any of these wires now because the only thing I need is truly is to give power to it. The only other thing I could think of is if one of these, like the brown wire there, is that some sort of ground of some sort? I don't know. That's the only thing I want to make sure of, you know. You can give something power, but you don't have a ground and you're going to a fuel pump, you can have some serious issues. So I need to get a hold of Jose and find out what that's for. Also, for you guys... Uh, Toyota pin connectors, they have this bad habit of having these little white plugs on the side. You're supposed to depin from inside like usual, nothing special. But on the side of Toyota connectors, what they do is they put these little white locks on them. Um, pretty much everyone I've dealt with has done this. I, I forgot about it because it's been so long. Um, you need to pull this white pin out. If you can see there, it's slightly pulled out, sticking out from the black plug itself. Um, you need to pull this out before you can stick anything inside of here to depin this. Now, I wanted to show you guys something else. This little nifty tool here is not a tool, or I guess it is a tool because I made it. But what it is, is part of a windshield wiper. I learned this from my grandfather back in the day um, when he was deep pinning stuff on, like in the early 90s, late 80s on like Chevy Camaros and all that good stuff. Um, you just cut off a piece of an old windshield wiper and cut it down, file it down, and this works perfect to fit in there to deep pin old plugs. 
Um, I've seen tools that are specific for this, but honestly, this has worked great for me and I've never had an issue. Um, I have got a couple pieces cut up in there just for this, but if you have an old windshield wiper or even if you have to go buy a new one, I mean, you can buy a cheap windshield wiper for seven, eight bucks and just cut it to pieces and cut a couple pieces out, ground down an edge and you're good to go. So just to throw that out there for you guys too, just a nifty little tool I use a good bit. So Jason's here right now. So hi Jason. Jason's how happy. Look at him. We're watching TX2K right now. And I'm gonna walk back to the back of the car because I depend the wrong wire. So let me explain real quick because I'm an idiot. So let's go back here. Let me grab my light real quick. So I depend over here, if you guys can see, I was depending the red and blah, red and blue wire, I guess. Yeah, the red and blue wire that's in that. What I needed to do was depend this blue wire right here. And the kid is actually plugging directly into this because he said this wire is not even thick enough for what he liked. And he didn't want to take a chance of actually burning this wire out. So to make it even better, I'm going to pin it directly into the fuel pump itself. And yeah, I should be good to go from there then. Uh, it's a little frustrating that I had to do it this way because now I have to try and feed the wire through there. That little grommet up and over in here. Uh, it's going to be a little interesting to figure out how I'm going to get the wiring through which I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that. But yeah, that's a new obstacle in itself. I still have my Texas 2K DVDs from yesterday. Me and my friends got a little drunk last night and we watched TX 2K videos out in the garage. And you can see we have chairs and shit set up still. But yeah, we had a little bit of fun last night. So guys, just wanted to give you a last little update. Um, got all the wiring out, all that's done now. Um, I talked to Jose, he sent me the tracking for all the wiring and everything was supposed to be here yesterday, which would have been Saturday. And it never fucking showed up. Um, he sent me a screenshot. I said, dude, look, right here's everything. It says it's supposed to deliver. He paid for one day delivery shipping, whatever the hell, overnight delivery, whatever the fuck it's called. And it never showed up. Now he just got an update. He's like, look, he sent me another screenshot. And he sent me the tracking, obviously, so I can check it myself. And I'm like, fuck. Not showing it. It's supposed to be here today. Now, USPS does deliver on Sundays for special occasions. Um, I told him he needs to get his money back because that's the first thing he says. He's like, dude, I got to call him. He's like, because... For that one little small item, he's like, I had to pay like $60 to ship it to you overnight, and you, you didn't get it. So it doesn't make any sense. So he's working with USPS to get all that sorted out. But it's just frustrating when we both thought it would be here yesterday. I could get it in, start the car back up, just wanted to check the wiring again. Um, I guess it's not a big deal. I mean, it's just, it's just a fuse box relay set up, and I'll be able to run the wires here today. But the fact that it wasn't done was just frustrating for me. Just I... I get annoyed really e easily, so it's just frustrating on my behalf that, yeah, they didn't get in here in time. But it is what it is, and it'll be here today, and I'll show you guys probably that in another video, because I'd like to wrap this one up. All right, guys, I think that's going to be it for this one. Thank you very much, as usual. I appreciate everything you guys do for me and the, all the support and love. Uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about here is I mentioned before about headlights. Well, a gentleman from a company called... NOZ Customs is actually going to be sending me the aluminum, or I think they're actually steel headlight rings that go inside the headlights. So let me show you real quick. So inside the actual headlights here on the 98s and even in the older style, they have like these little rings in it. Well, they're just plastic and almost have like a plastic wrap on them um, and they deteriorate over time. So he actually has made billet rings that go inside of here. I think they're billet or maybe they're billet steel. I'm not sure, um, but they're polished and they look great. So I'll be able to do this when I do the uh, headlight remodel. So I'm kind of excited about that. The company is called NOZ Customs. I'll put them in the link in the description below. Seems like a great guy. You can't beat them for the price. I think they're like 125 pounds or 125 euros. Um, I think they, they look great. So I'm pretty excited about getting that done. I'll show you guys how to redo the headlights. There's a gentleman from Pittsburgh who should be sending out the headlights here shortly. So I'll be able to get that done as soon as possible and kind of do a step-by-step -step and walk you guys through how to do that. And it's not, I just want to kind of point out that this just isn't for super headlights. This is really going to work across the board for the most part. I did this on my cousin's car way back in the day. We're talking like 06, 07 frame time. Um, we took his apart and had done it. Um, it was a little bit different in the fact that we didn't have to like, you know, paint anything inside. Or no, I lied. We actually painted the inside of the housing black from chrome. So yes, we did. We painted the inside of the housing black from a chrome thing. And uh, all we did was tape it off and did it. And it, it turned out pretty damn good for being a bunch of kids. So I'll be going over that soon, guys. And I hope you enjoyed going over that video because I think it's going to be very helpful for a lot of you guys out there.
like I was saying, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Do me a favor, please. I would appreciate it if you would go down below, click on my Facebook page, Pure Function Engineering, and go check it out. I'm always posting stuff. Or go to my Instagram if you want to see some funny shit because I just go ham on that. Uh, any of you that already follow that know that I have no hold back on my Instagram. I just post whatever I feel like or show whatever I feel like. That's Pure Function underscore, and it's also in the description below. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll talk to you later. Peace!